Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Today I'll be discussing tips for flying domestic within the United States. But before we get into the video, please don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel so that you never get to miss another travel tip with me and Kat. So the first tip is in regards to the basic economy fare ticket. This is actually pretty fairly new, I think, in the world of buying a ticket online for your flight within the United States. And so some airlines have a basic economy fare. It's a cheaper option in economy. The reason why it is very cheap is because they only allow you to bring like a duffel bag, a backpack, or a weekender bag. So they don't allow you to bring a regular size carry-on luggage like so. But other plane tickets allow you to bring a carry-on luggage like this one. That's the first tip. Also with basic economy fare, if you do plan on bringing a carry-on luggage and they see that when you do check in at the airport before you get to security and they see that you have a carry-on luggage, they're gonna require that you do check in the bag and pay for check-in. The second tip is in regards to if you are planning to carry on your bag, your luggage, or check in your luggage. So if you do plan on checking in your luggage, depending on what airline you plan on flying with for that time, some airlines charge like $25 to $50 per bag to check in. However, Southwest does provide two free check-in bags every time you fly. If you are, let's say, not willing to spend for $25 or $50 on checking in your bag, there is another way to check in your bag for free. I'm gonna explain that later on in the video. The third tip before checking in your bag is in regards to a couple rules that most airlines and TSA have for when you check in your bag. So your luggage can't be more than 50 pounds. So while you're packing your luggage, please make sure to like, weigh your bag before going to the airport, checking in and weighing it on the scale. I just don't like going and then checking when I'm there and then unloading stuff in my luggage and like kind of exposing my luggage to everyone else in line. That's kind of not what I like to do. And then another tip is that you can kind of pack whatever you want in your check-in, in your carry-on, any liquids that are over three fluid ounces. You can kind of pack anything just as long as there's no flammables or big batteries. I noticed that when I do check in, I don't have a luggage or a carry-on that has like a portable charger on it, but I noticed that when I do check in and someone next to me has a luggage with a portable charger on it, they have to take out that portable charger on the carry-on to have it be checked in. So a lot of the attendants do ask like, oh, can you please take out this huge battery pack before you check it in. That's kind of just part of the protocol. The fourth tip for when you are checking in your luggage is that if you plan on checking in a luggage or a box full of breakables or fragile items, just let the attendant know and they will put like fragile stickers all over the luggage or box and make sure that everything's kind of secure. They will ask you like, oh, did you safely secure this? Like what's it wrapped in? Like what is in the box that is breakable? And sometimes you just tell them, so. So the fifth tip is in regards to if you plan on carrying on your luggage onto the plane. So before you do that, please make sure that your luggage is within measurement and that is 22 inches high, nine inches deep and 14 inches wide. Cause sometimes if you do bring your carry on and you get to the gate past security and everything and the attendant sees your luggage is a bit big for the measurement, sometimes they just eyeball it. They'll kind of ask you to put it in this little measurement slot and kind of put your luggage in the slot and if it doesn't fit, they're gonna request that you check it in. So make sure that your luggage is within measurement. My sixth tip for if you do plan on bringing your luggage onto the plane and carrying it on, for TSA regulations, you have to make sure that all your liquids in your luggage are 3.4 fluid ounces or less so that they can it can easily go through the TSA line. That's kind of the only rule that they have. And I also make sure that when I do pack my carry-on luggage that all my liquids are kind of in one section my luggage so I don't have to take them out and like show them to TSA 
before putting it on the belt. So tip seven is in regards to being in TSA. So before you get to TSA, there are designated lines. There's general boarding and usually there's an attendant there. It's usually like someone who checks your boarding pass to see that you are boarding a flight in the terminal that you're in and that everything's correct. And there's TSA pre-check line, which is a line where people kind of skip. They kind of bypass general boarding and it's a very shorter line. A lot of the TSA like security attendants that check your ID when you do go through security will check you in first before doing general boarding. If you're in TSA pre-check, that's another reason why a lot of people like to enroll in TSA pre-check. For you to be a part of TSA pre-check, I think there is an application for it and there is a fee every five years and I think it's like a hundred dollars every five years and you kind of have to go through the application process. So like you fill out an application, you you send it in and then you like wait for an interview and then once you're approved you kind of have it in every boarding pass that you get on your phone or on like when you print it out it'll say TSA pre-check with a little green check mark. Also there is another way to get TSA pre-check. For some reason my mom she always gets TSA pre-check and I think it's because of her miles. My mom used to work for United Airlines for like 13 years and ever since she started working there, my mom, me, and my dad, we've each been like accumulating a lot of miles over time because my mom ranked up the most miles. I don't know how many miles she has currently, but because of her mileage status, she gets TSA pre-check for free literally everywhere. She like checks in, obviously not Southwest because she doesn't fly Southwest frequently, but if she flies like United, or American Airlines or Delta, she always, most of the time, like 75% of the time, gets TSA pre-check. And so sometimes when she buys like everyone's plane ticket, we all get TSA pre-check, which is nice. If you just are a loyal customer and you keep flying the same airline and you accumulate all your miles, you probably will end up getting TSA pre-check. So my eighth tip is that if you are flying domestic, you don't necessarily need your passport unless you're flying internationally. So let's say like you're flying into another airport within the United States and you're connecting in that airport to go internationally, then you'd need your passport for when you do fly internationally. But if you are flying to that airport, like doing your first leg of the trip, so from airport A in the United States to airport B in the United States, you don't need your passport to show to TSA. They'll just ask for your driver's license. If you are planning to just fly in the United States just in general and your final destination is a destination or a city in the United States, then you don't need your passport. You just need your driver's license. They'll just check to see if it's real. And then my ninth tip while being in TSA, going through security, is I notice this a lot when I travel certain airports and maybe certain like TSA people. Sometimes when you go through security and you go through the line, sometimes they won't ask you to like take off your shoes or take off your jacket and that everything you have on is fine. That all you have to do is put your luggage or your backpack or your other carry on onto the belt and that's it. Whereas some people, some other airports or some other security lines require that you take out all your liquids and make sure that they're sectioned off in one ziplock. So you take out all your liquids and you put it separately from your carry-on and everything else. And other places require that you take off your shoes and your jacket and your belt. And then other places also require that you take out your laptop even like as minute as an iPad or um, a Kindle. It kind of just depends on where you go, but usually they'll instruct you over and over and over again while you're going through TSA on what to put on the belt and what you can like just leave on yourself. And then my 10th tip is for once you are at the gate for your flight. So once you're at the gate and let's say you have a connecting flight to go to another destination like in the United States, and you're kind of curious 
as to what gate you'll be arriving in for the flight that you're gonna take right on your first leg. So you can ask the attendant at the gate what gate that your flight plans on arriving in and she'll let you know so that you know that it's close to the gate for your connecting flight. And my 11th and final tip for this video for flying domestic is when you're at the gate and you don't want to pay for check-in or anything you already went through security everything went, went fine everything's a breeze and you don't want to pay for the check-in fee you can simply ask the attendant at the gate if the flight is full and if the flight is full you can check in your bag for free usually what happens is when the flight is full right before boarding the attendant will say on the PA that this is a full flight and if anyone is willing to volunteer to check in their bag for free of charge, they can come up to the gate counter and get their bag checked in for free. So that's usually what I do when I fly and it's not like an airline like Southwest where I don't have the option to check in my bag. So usually when I fly and it's a United Airlines flight or Delta or any of the other airlines that are not Southwest and don't provide like free check-in bag, you know, every flight you get like Southwest, I usually, once I get to the gate, I ask the attendant if the flight is full, like at full capacity, and if she or he says yes, I'm like, okay, may I please check in my bag? And I like to do it way before boarding because once they provide the option right before boarding, to allow people to volunteer and come up to the counter and check in their bag for free. It kind of becomes a madhouse because there'll be like five to 10 people like saying, oh, I want to check in my bag for free. And then it's like this lady or guy at the gate try to tag all these bags right before boarding. And so they try to wrap it up. Whereas I just like to go 20 minutes before boarding time, depending on when I get to the gate. But when I first get to the gate and I want to check in my bag, that's kind of what I do just so I don't have to wait in line and provide more stress for the person at the gate. When you do check in your bag at the gate, sometimes they'll have the option of you leaving your bag at the counter and the lady goes down the jetway bridge and like brings it to the guys who are putting the bags into check-in under the plane. Or they'll probably tell you to bring your luggage in and leave it by the door across from the door to get into the plane. That way the guys that are handling the bags to check in get the bag and they know that it's tagged and ready to go to its final destination. And that is it for all the tips I have for when you're flying domestic within the United States. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope this video was very informative. Please comment or like below if you have any other questions in regards to traveling because I do have a, a bunch of other tips that uh, I can give out but it kind of just depends on what you guys are looking for. So thank you so much for watching and I look forward to my next video.